My name is John Laverty, and I have primary progressive multiple sclerosis. This is my story. All of us who have MS have a unique course of the disease that is as unique to us as our personality or the way we look. But there are a couple of things that we do share in common, all of us. All of us have had a first symptom. There's been a, an amount of time that goes by, and then finally a diagnosis. We all have a unique story about that, and I've been, I've been watching a lot of, a lot of YouTube videos about people telling their story, and I thought, I thought maybe it was time to share mine. So here's my story from first symptom to diagnosis. My first symptom happened when I was in my mid thirties. I was a graduate student living in Florida. I decided that I was going to get into a little better shape. I was getting ready to enter the workforce again after being in graduate school for a few years. So I decided I was going to start jogging one day. Now I had done a lot of running in my twenties and just over the years I had stopped doing it. So I decided, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get in shape and I'm going to do it by, by starting to run again. The second I tried to run, actually jog, I noticed something was very wrong. That memory is etched in my mind crystal clear because from that moment on, my life changed. So my first symptom was, as I was trying to run, I had difficulty picking my feet up. I felt like I was running in mud. It was, it was a, an uncomfortable feeling and a foreign feeling. I'd never felt anything like that before. So I called my, my GP, my general practitioner, and set up a meeting with her. And we talked about what it might possibly be. And together we looked at the one medicine that I was on, which was a cholesterol lowering drug, to see if there were possibly any side effects from that drug that might be causing my difficulties. Sure enough, there was a side effect that could have been the problem. That side effect was muscle weakness. Well, that seemed like a logical thing to perhaps blame this on. So I went off my cholesterol lowering drug for six months. Six months later, I went back to see my doctor. She did a blood test to check my cholesterol level. And of course it spiked upward into an an unhealthy level. And she asked me how I was doing, if I felt any different. And while I didn't have any additional symptoms, my difficulty jogging was now starting to translate into difficulty walking. And it was very subtle and it happened over a six month period, but it, it was noticeably different. Maybe not from the outside, but certainly the way, the way I felt it, things were different and they were not different in a good way. Then my doctor said, I honestly don't know what's wrong with you. All your blood work seems fine, except for my cholesterol, of course. And other than difficulty jogging and now walking, I was a fairly healthy individual. Fast forward a couple of years, I get a new job, get a new doctor. My new doctor, after I explain what what's going on with me. My new doctor says, I'm going to send you to see a neurologist. I was now starting to get concerned. This was now about three years into my symptoms. I now had a noticeable limp. So it wasn't just me saying something was wrong. People could look at me and they could see me walking and notice that something, something was not right. So I go to see a neurologist, and that was an interesting experience. Fortunately, he was a wonderful doctor. He put me through a series of tests. He did a neurological exam, ordered a CT and an MRI for me, did a lumbar puncture, that was a lot of fun, did a test called a myelogram, that too was a lot of fun, and did the least comfortable of the test, which was a series of nerve conduction tests. After all these tests, my doctor, my neurologist said, I think you have hereditary autonomic sensory neuropathy type two. Yeah, that was a mouthful. It took me a while to memorize that one. 
Turns out that wasn't it. Year or two more goes by, a couple more MRIs. He notices that there's an abnormality in my spine, in my thoracic region. I have a cyst in my spinal cord, something that's called a syrinx. The condition is syringomyelia. So my neurologist said, I think you might have syringomyelia and that's what's causing your problem. So this was now my fourth diagnosis. The first diagnosis was reaction to a medicine you're on. Second diagnosis, and by the way, this is a very common one that I've noticed a lot of people with MS experience and are told. It's where the doctor looks at you and goes, I got nothing. I, I don't know what's wrong with you. That's the I don't know diagnosis. My third diagnosis was hereditary autonomic sensory neuropathy type 2. And my fourth diagnosis was syringomyelia. Now, with a syrinx, there is a medical treatment, a surgical treatment you can do. And the type of doctor that does that is a doctor called a neurosurgeon. So I went to see a neurosurgeon, two actually. I, I got one opinion, then I got a second opinion. It was during the second opinion that the neurosurgeon said to me, I don't think that the syrinx is what's causing your problem and surgery is not indicated. But I think you might have something like ALS. ALS is also known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. Of all the diseases you can be diagnosed with, that's, that's one of the ones you, you, don't, you don't want to be diagnosed with. That's the one you don't want to hear your doctor say. I knew exactly what that disease was. I had had a friend that had just died from it. So I go back to see my neurologist and I discovered something very important during that meeting. A neurologist and a neurosurgeon are two completely different fields. He was furious. I did not have ALS. However, he still didn't know what I had. So now that was my fifth diagnosis. Now he said, and this was about year 14 from first symptom to the road to a diagnosis. In year 14, he said, I'm going to send you to see a colleague of mine, someone who is a multiple sclerosis specialist. That was the first time I had ever heard the words multiple sclerosis come from a doctor's mouth. So I go to see the MS specialist, Again, a really fantastic doctor. I've been, I've been really lucky over the years to have had fantastic doctors. The neurosurgeon, eh, not so much. But the MS specialist listened to me, did, did all the exams that you're supposed to do, ordered another lumbar puncture, MRI, neurological exam. And he told me, I'm gonna get the results back. I wanna see you in three months. So I had three months after seeing my MS specialist to, I wouldn't say freak out, but to contemplate what it might mean to have MS. In order to know what it might mean to have MS, I needed to do my own research. Fortunately, I have a science background and I have the ability to do research and kind of weed through things that are a value from, from a knowledge standpoint and things that, that you, sh you should avoid. So I did my research. I learned a lot about MS. I learned what it was, and most importantly, I learned what it was not. I learned that it was not something that would kill me. That was a relief. I learned that there were basically three types of MS, relapsing, remitting, secondary progressive, and primary progressive. After learning about the different types of MS, I pretty much figured out that I had primary progressive MS. My symptoms had started out as something very subtle and had progressed in a measurable and logical way over 14 years. When I finally did meet with my doctor, finally had that meeting, and he sat me down and said, John, I'm sorry to tell you, you have primary progressive MS. It was a weird reaction on my part. I was actually relieved. I've seen and read about 
other people with MS, when they're diagnosed, reacting in the same way I did, relief. From my perspective, it was relief because I finally knew what was wrong. I knew what was causing my problems. That was in 2009. In 2009, there were no treatments for primary progressive MS. There was not much that he could do. But knowing gave me a great sense of relief and it allowed me to plan for the future. It allowed me to adapt my home because with primary progressive MS, you never get better. Actually, with all forms of MS, you never get better. But I knew what it was, and it helped me to better prepare for what my future was going to be. So my journey from first symptom to diagnosis took 15 years. I had five misdiagnoses, and I finally got the answers to my questions in year 15. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of other people with MS talking about their experiences. And frankly, my experience is not all that abnormal. I think maybe the time from first symptom to diagnosis was a bit long, but I have heard about other people who have gone into two decades from first symptom to diagnosis, their journey lasting even longer than mine did. We all have our unique journey it's not fun. Nothing about MS is fun. But we all have that same story. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to be trying to post some other videos about how I have dealt with MS and things that I've learned about MS that perhaps will be helpful to someone else dealing with this horrible disease. That's it for now.